Okay, so we've looked at the first two circumstances, or the first two cases for the law of sines, and that's angle angle side and angle side angle. We need to look at one more case, and that's the side side angle case for the law of sines. Unfortunately, this one's a little trickier. In fact, it's called the ambiguous case. And the reason it's called the ambiguous case is because there's an ambiguity. And that is, sometimes the three parts you're given will make no triangle at all. There are times when the three parts you're given will make a single triangle, one triangle. And there are even times when the three pieces you're given can make two possible triangles. In this first of the two videos for the side-side angle, the ambiguous case, we're going to look at those situations where the... Um, you get either no triangle or one triangle. They're a little easier. The, uh, the two triangle situation is a little more complicated and we'll do that in its own video. Okay, so I'm going to draw a partial triangle here to show you what's going on. Alright, we're going to do two sides here. I'm going to draw a partial triangle here. It's not going to be a full triangle. And you'll see why in a minute. Okay, and then I'm also going to draw in this line right here. You should be familiar with that line. That line is the height of the triangle. Oops. Go ahead and make this a dotted line so we're clear that that's not part of the triangle we're looking at. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and label some parts here. We're going to use the standard letters this time because I think it will be clearer. Let's use a capital A here, that's for angle A, so this will be side A, right, opposite it, and we'll call this side B. Okay, I think you should recognize that this line I've drawn coming down the center of the triangle here is the height of this particular triangle. We'll call it H. Okay, now I want you to look at this left-hand triangle here that I've created with the height. That's this triangle here, here, and here. Okay? I can get an expression for H using A and B, can't I? H is the opposite side of angle A and B is the hypotenuse for that right triangle. So I can say that the, oops, I can say that the sine, the sine of angle A is opposite over hypotenuse. If I multiply both sides by B, I get an expression for the height of my triangle using side B and angle A. That's an angle and its adjacent side. So H equals B sine A. Okay, now take a look at the diagram I've shown you here. We're talking first about a situation where the angle is acute. The angle is less than 90 degrees. Let me go ahead and write that. This is an acute angle. My angle is less than 90 degrees. A is acute. Okay? So take a look at side A here. And I think you should be able to see that if angle A and, a and side B are a given length that does not change, that in order to make a triangle, this side A has to be bigger than H, doesn't it? Or equal to H. Okay? A can be equal to H. If A is equal to H, we're going to get one triangle, and we're going to get one right triangle, aren't we? We're not going to worry too much about that circumstance because you know how to deal with right triangles already. Okay? We will get no triangles if A is less than H. If this line, if this line A, if the side A is less than the height of this triangle, there is no way that this line right here is ever going to hook up with that side of the triangle, is it? We can swing it all over the place here, can't we? It will never hook up with that line. So if A is less than H, we get no triangle.
okay? If A is bigger than H, we will get at least, at least one triangle. So what determines, as I said, there are two possibilities here other than none. It's either one or two. So what determines whether or not we get one triangle or two triangles? Okay, let's take a look at it. I will tell you that since this video is about the one triangle circumstance, you get one triangle when A is larger than B. We'll put this in parentheses because that's not exactly a rule there because it doesn't really specify whether we get one or two. Okay, so if A is bigger than B, we will get one triangle. Okay, so one more time, if we find H, we can immediately determine whether there's no triangle if A is less than H. If A is less than H, then we have no triangle. Once we get bigger than H or equal to H, we have one triangle, at least. Okay, if it's equal to H, we have a triangle. If A is bigger than B, we have one triangle. I think you can see what the other option is. The other option is that A is bigger than H, but it's not as big as B. So there's one other option here, and that is that side A is bigger than H, but smaller than B. That's the circumstance where we're going to have two triangles, and that will be the subject for the second half of this look at the ambiguous case, the SSA case. Okay, so one more time, because this can be very confusing, I know. When your side A, the side that's opposite the angle that's given to you in the problem, is equal to H or bigger than H, you're going to have at least one triangle. If it's equal to H, you'll have one triangle. And if side A is bigger than side B, you will have one triangle. If A is smaller than H, you can never get a triangle. So, as I said, you already know how to deal with right triangles, so we're not going to mess with that. We're not going to talk about no triangle because that's the answer. If you were given that circumstance, your answer would be there is no triangle. So what we need to do is solve one where there is one triangle. And that, as I said, is the circumstance where A is bigger than B. So let me draw one of those problem types. Here we go. Let's say we have a 30 degree angle. That's about right. Okay, and a side that's a bit longer than that one. There we go. And we'll connect these up. All right, let's put some no numbers in here. Let's say this is, we'll, we'll make it easy. We'll keep this a 30 degree angle. And we'll make this side 16 and this side 20. Okay, if we take a look at our height, which is right here. Okay, let's go ahead and dot that so we know it's not part of the triangle. All right, if we look at our height, we can find that height, as we said, That height is going to be the side adjacent to the angle times the sine of that angle. In other words, look at the right triangle on the left here. There's a right angle right here, isn't there? Okay, so 16 times the sine of 30. The sine of 30, that's why I picked that number, is a half. So this is 8. So we know the, side, the height here is 8. We really don't have to worry about the height much here because my other side, my side that's 20, is bigger than A. So actually the height does not matter. But I wanted to show you the height because if this side here, if the other side had been less than 8, the answer would be no triangle. If it was equal to 8, the answer would be triangle. One triangle, one right triangle. If that side is bigger than H, if it had been bigger than H but smaller than 16, say 10, then you would have had two triangles.
Okay, so those are our situations. One more time. If this side here, this side that isn't adjacent to the angle, had been less than h, there would have been no triangle. If that side had been equal to the height h, you would have had one right triangle. If that side is bigger than the adjacent side to the angle, like it is here, you have one triangle. But if that side had been bigger than h but smaller than a, between 8 and 16, like 10, you would have two triangles, which is the subject of our next video. So let's go ahead and finish this particular um, example. And then I want to talk to you about acute triangles. I mean, I'm sorry, obtuse triangles. So I'm going to erase that because that really doesn't have any bearing on our problem right now. So we're back to the law of signs, aren't we? Okay. What we're going to need to do, the only thing it looks like we can do here is we do have our pair of um, opposite side and opposite angle, right? So what can we do? We can find this angle over here. Let's call it x. So what have we got? Since we're finding an angle, I'm going to put the angle on the top. So I'm going to say that the sine of 30 degrees over 20 equals the sine of the angle I'm looking for over its opposite side, which is 16. Probably your easiest thing to do again here is to multiply both sides by 16. You could also cross multiply. But bear in mind that the answer you get here is going to be the sine of our angle, not our angle. Okay? If you do this math and use your inverse sine button, that's the shift or second above the SIN button, that will give us the inverse sine or the arc sine of that, angle, of that sine. Okay, that will give us the angle 23.58 degrees. So this angle right here, let me go ahead and erase this stuff. There we go. This angle here is 23.58 degrees. What should I be able to do next? I've got a missing angle and a missing side, don't I? To find the missing angle, all I really need to do is add my two angles together and subtract from 180. So 30 plus 23.58 is, what is that, 53.58. If I subtract from 180, that means this angle right here is 126.42 degrees. Now I can find my final side. Since I'm looking for my side, as we talked about with my initial Law of Signs video, it's easier to put the, the uh, side lengths on the top. So again, we're going to use the, the information that was given to us in the problem. Don't use this 23.58 because that could be wrong, number one. And number two, it's a rounded answer. So you always want to go back to your original information from the problem. That's just good problem solving technique. If you can avoid using a number that you solved earlier in the problem, avoid it. Uh, what do we call this? Let's call this y. How's that? y over the sine of 126.42 degrees. Okay? We can multiply both sides by the sine of 126.42 degrees or we can cross multiply and divide. Either way you're going to get this kind of a statement. 20 times the sine of 126.42 degrees over the sine of 30 degrees. When you do that math, and I'll do it to two decimal places, I get the answer 32.19. And that's this last side here. Okay? And um, I've said this before, and I just want to make sure you, you hear me loud and clear. Don't round until the end of a problem. Ever, ever, ever. You should never, ever round until the end of a problem. Don't round halfway through. Okay? You should do all the math and then round at the end. Um, you'll cause yourself troubles if you do that. Okay? And as I've mentioned to you before, we can use the triangle inequality theorem to double check to make sure our answer kind of makes sense. For example, here I have my largest angle, and this is the opposite side is my largest side. My smallest angle, which is this one, is opposite my smallest side. And the one that's missing there, the other pair, 
that's my medium sized angle is opposite my medium sized side. Okay, so the triangle inequality theorem is a really good way to check your work. Okay, that's acute angles. Now let's talk very quickly, and we're not even actually going to do an example of this. I'm just going to explain to you what the situation is. What if A What if A, angle A, is obtuse? If A is greater than 90 degrees. Okay, let's draw an example of this. Same kind of drawing I drew up top, except now that, that now that angle that I'm talking about is an obtuse angle. This angle right here is bigger than 90 degrees, isn't it? Okay, I think you can tell that. We're going to call this side A, like we did above, and this side B. I think you should be able to see pretty clearly what has to happen here. Okay, if we've got side angle A and side B, Angle A, there are two options. If A is less than or equal to B, then you're not going to get a triangle. Think about it. If this side right here is either smaller than B, like it's drawn here, or even equal to B, even if this were extended a little bit, there's no way I could swing this side and get it to match up with my remaining side of my triangle. You would not get a triangle. The only way to get a triangle for an obtuse angle A is if the opposite side is bigger than the adjacent side. You will get one triangle. So once again, the only way to get a single triangle, and that's all you can get is one triangle, out of an obtuse angle is if its opposite angle is bigger than its adjacent angle. And that's if A is obtuse. Okay, so our last situation then is going to be our two triangle situation that we talked about up above. Let me bring it back down here again so we can talk about that just very quickly before we get to that video. Again, the, th the last situation was this one. And that is what happens when that opposite side, the side that is opposite the angle, is bigger than the height but smaller than B. That was the only other circumstance we didn't talk about. And in that situation, you can get two triangles. So we're going to take a look at that next in part two of the ambiguous case of the law of sines, side-side angle. Thanks.